Have you ever wondered what goes on behind the scenes of a famous Hollywood movie? Paris When It Sizzles, a film from 1964 starring Audrey Hepburn and William Holden, gives you a peek into the chaotic world of a screenwriter racing to finish a script. But it's not just about work. There are lots of funny, surprising, and even touching moments to enjoy. We got some interesting facts about this movie to share with you, so stay tuned. Have you ever thought back on a scene from Paris when it sizzles long after watching it? Or maybe this movie has had an impact on your life. Share your memories and stories in the comments below. Let's keep the conversation going. In 1964, a film called Paris when it sizzles hit theaters. It starred Audrey Hepburn and William Holden, two famous actors of the time. Some people liked it, some didn't. Critics had mixed feelings about the story and how fast it moved. But even though not everyone loved it at first, the movie became really popular over time. People liked its fun look at making movies and life in Paris. It got a big following with fans loving its charm. Because of this, they made other versions of it like plays and books. You could even buy things like posters and clothes based on the movie. So, even though Paris when it sizzles wasn't a big hit right away, it became important to a lot of people. It shows that even if something doesn't seem special at first, it can still become really loved over time. Paris When It Sizzles is a movie from 1964. The screenplay is based on a story called La Faire de Henriette by Julian Duvivier and Henry Jeanson. Frank Sinatra, though not physically present, lends his voice to sing the title song as imagined by the character Richard during the opening title sequence. The movie features several hit songs sung by Sinatra, both solo and with bands. These include Five Minutes More, Lean in the Blues, Mamsell, Oh, What It Seemed to Be, Strangers in the Night, All or Nothing at All with the Harry James Band, and Something Stupid with daughter Nancy Sinatra. He also had hits as the front singer for the Tommy Dorsey Band, such as I'll Never Smile Again, Dolores, There Are Such Things, and In the Blue of Evening. In Italy, she was mainly dubbed by Maria Pia Di Mio, except in her initial two films, and in Green Mansions where Fiorella Betty dubbed her. When she didn't receive an Academy Award nomination for her role as Eliza Doolittle, Katherine Hepburn sent her an encouraging message. Ironically, Hepburn beat her for a nomination in a subsequent film. She attended the Italia Connie Academy of Theatre Arts, alongside actors like Kelly Brook, Richard Todd, and Leslie Phillips. Paris When It Sizzles is a 1964 movie with some interesting tidbits. In it, the main actor was offered a role in another movie called Death Wish, but turned it down. The role ended up making Charles Bronson famous. In one scene, the character played by Fred Astaire puts on a song called That Face on a Record Player. This might be a nod to another movie he was in where he sang a song to Audrey Hepburn's character. Also, William Holden and Hepburn share a short dance scene similar to their work together in another movie. The movie also touches on a story about a guy named Jules Seastein who helped start a big music company. He offered the main actor a lot of money to work for a long time but the actor said no because he wanted to keep his freedom. So, Paris When It Sizzles from 1964 is not just a fun movie. It also has interesting stories about casting and references to other movies. In Paris When It Sizzles, a 1964 movie, French actor Raymond Boussiers provided post-synchronized English dialogue while he handled the French version himself. During this time, Paris When It Sizzles brought together Audrey Hepburn and Mel Ferrer, who met at a gathering thrown by Gregory Peck. Interestingly, Ferrer introduced Hepburn to the script for Ondine, a Broadway play they would later star in together. Notably, in 1964, Hepburn, then 48, met Mia Farrow, who was 19 at the time. This significant age difference led Dean Martin to humorously remark that he owned a bottle of scotch older than Farrow. The interactions and connections among the cast and crew add depth to the behind-the-scenes stories of Paris when it sizzles. Paris when it sizzles is a film from 1964. He, famous for his roles in movies like Some Like It Hot and Spartacus, couldn't join the military during World War II because of a problem with his ear. His acting in Winchester 73's Sweet Smell of Success, Some Like It Hot, Spartacus, and Rosemary's Baby got recognized by the National Film Registry. He showed his singing skills in the 1955 album Noel Coward in Las Vegas, which many people think is great. When he performed live, he spoke clearly and moved gracefully, entertaining audiences with his funny pieces and classic songs. In the world of movies, Paris When It Sizzles has interesting connections and elements. It first got attention when it was turned into a stage show called Sugar, based on the famous movie Some Like It Hot from 1959. In Paris When It Sizzles, the main character plays a role originally done by Joe E. Brown in Some Like It Hot. 
As the story goes on, there's a part where they show a scene in an alley with a cat and a couple in the rain like the end of Breakfast at Tiffany's from 1961. This is a subtle way of paying tribute to that famous scene. Another interesting thing is that Marlene Dietrich appears in the movie as herself, not a character. In one scene, she gets out of a fancy car, adding a realistic touch to the story. This mix of real life and fiction makes the movie more unique. To sum up, Paris when it sizzles connects to other famous movies and mixes elements from both stage and screen. It pays tribute to some like It Hot and Breakfast at Tiffany's, showing how different movies influence each other. Paris when it sizzles, released in 1964, featured Audrey Hepburn and William Holden in lead roles. Hepburn, who was fluent in English, Dutch, Spanish, French, and Italian, used her multilingualism to advantage during her acting career. Raised bilingually, speaking English and Dutch, her unique accent became a trademark. The weather during production was so bad that the cast and crew nicknamed the film Paris when it drizzles. Holden, who briefly lost the ability to sing after his vocal cords hemorrhaged in 1953, returned with a voice that many fans believed had improved. Their collaboration in the film created an enduring piece of cinema. During the presidency of John F. Kennedy, he planned to stay at Frank's house in Los Angeles as a gesture of gratitude for Frank's support during his campaign. Frank promptly constructed a helicopter pad to accommodate the president. However, Robert F. Kennedy convinced JFK not to stay there due to Frank's mafia connections. Consequently, JFK chose to stay at Bing Crosby's house, angering Frank. Frank, upon learning this, destroyed the helipad in frustration. Some speculated this incident influenced Frank's later switch to the Republican Party. The Dracula sequence in the film was the final one completed. It had to be shortened because William Holden crashed his new Ferrari, resulting in an injury. In July 1966, Frank was involved in a serious road accident in Italy. Paris, when it sizzles, the 1964 movie, holds a peculiar place in Audrey Hepburn's filmography. Despite calling it a joy to make, Hepburn's son, Sean Hepburn Fur, revealed in his memoir that it was her least favorite among the movies she starred in. He noted that the experience taught her a valuable lesson about the correlation between ease of production and film quality. Audrey Hepburn declined a role in Sayonara in 1957 opposite Marlon Brando, citing her inability to convincingly portray a Japanese character. This decision was based on her awareness of her own limitations as an actress. During the filming of Funny Face in 1957, Hepburn arranged her schedule to coincide with her husband's filming of Elena and her men in Paris to avoid separation. This decision reflected her desire to prioritize her personal life while pursuing her career. Hepburn's choices and experiences offer insights into the challenges and considerations actors face in their careers.